Hi, it's Katrina. From a treasure trove of valuable art to strange and shocking skulls, here are 10 mysterious artifacts from lost ancient tribes. Number 10. The Green Rock at Hattusa In Sorum, a seemingly unexciting town in modern-day Turkey, are the ruins of Hattusa, the imperial capital of the mysterious Hittite civilization. They suddenly disintegrated around 1180 BC, after centuries of wielding power over a swath of land stretching from Syria to the Dardanelles in northwestern Turkey. The Hittites left behind palaces, temples, and other artifacts testifying to the empire's former glory, but many of these structures are in ruins, and researchers admittedly know very very little about the society. Much of what scholars know about the Hittites was gleaned from the ruins at Hattusa, which consists of a royal palace, 31 temples, numerous gates, and dozens of hidden tunnels and passageways. As impressive as the city's architecture is, many tourists are lured to the site by a large, shiny green rock, which sits at the great temple in the lower portion of the once thriving metropolis. It's likely made from serpentinite, or nephrite, or jade, which are not uncommon throughout the region, but it's not the material that stumps the experts. It's the fact that the rock has remained in one piece for so long and appears much different from others nearby. Archaeologists have yet to identify the stone's origins, purpose, and history, as well as how it was transported to the site. Locals, on the other hand, call it the wishing stone. Efforts to solve the centuries-long mystery are ongoing. Number 9. Serpentine Mask Offering In late 2011, archaeologists from Mexico's National Anthropology and History Institute discovered a treasure trove of artifacts at the base of the Teotihuacan's Pyramid of the Sun, roughly 30 miles northeast of Mexico City. Thought to be ceremonial offerings from a consecration ritual performed before construction on the pyramid began 1,900 years ago, the collection included obsidian, pottery, and bone pieces, as well as a green serpentine mask made from stone. The ruins at Teotihuacan, which boasts some of the largest pre-Columbian pyramids in the Americas, rank among the most famous Mesoamerican archaeological sites. But much remains unknown about the mysterious, unidentified civilization who built the ancient city, which the society abandoned centuries before the Aztecs discovered it around 1300. Researchers are still trying to definitively determine what the Pyramid of the Sun was even used for, with some speculating that it was a royal tomb, while others believe that it served as a portal to the underworld. The treasure trove that yielded the serpentine mask was discovered under a pile of rubble at the pyramid center. Due to its shockingly lifelike qualities, archaeologists believe that the mask may be a portrait. Experts hope to learn more about the people of Teotihuacan as they further explore its pyramids. Number 8. Underwater Burial In early 2011, archaeologists got quite the surprise when they uncovered the remains of numerous Mesolithic people underwater dating back 8,000 years. A team of researchers from Stockholm University and the Cultural Heritage Foundation discovered this underwater grave site in what is now southern Sweden, near an archaeological site called Kanak Jordan. They had been searching the site for several years, but all they had found were animal bones, until this. Their findings, which were published in 2018 in the journal Antiquity, explained that all the remains were skulls, minus one infant. At least two skulls bore evidence of a stake or a pole having been driven through them at the base at one time, and all the adult skulls were missing their jawbones. Even more strangely, the 11 adult skulls all contained signs of trauma, particularly of being struck in the head multiple times, with men being hit on the top or the front of the head and women sustaining injuries from behind. With only skulls to work with, it was impossible for experts to determine what caused the individual's deaths, but the injuries in this case did not seem life-threatening. Strangely enough, people during the Mesolithic era were hunter-gatherers and were not known for being violent. In fact, the civilization was not known for engaging in any gruesome burial customs whatsoever. They stuck to simple and respectful forms of parting with the deceased. Skulls on posts were not what they were expecting to find. So what were these people doing here, and who were they? 8,000 years ago, this burial site would have been at the bottom of a shallow lake covered with tightly packed stones. The guess is that these hunter-gatherers drove stakes through skulls as a way of scaring off enemies, rather than as a burial ritual. Virtually everything about the burial and its bizarre circumstances remains a mystery. It is possible these people were transported here, but the watery location of the remains was also odd for the ancient society who had laid the individuals to rest. Or something. They probably didn't get that much rest. Number 7. African Ghost Tribe 
Back in the Stone Age, four children were buried before their time. However, these children have revealed many secrets about the people who lived in Cameroon, Africa thousands of years ago. In a study published in January in the online journal Nature, researchers described finding 18 human burials and countless artifacts at the Shumlaka Rock Shelter in the grasslands of modern-day Cameroon. With its use dating back at least 30,000 years, Shumlaka is one of the earliest known settlements in what's believed to be the homeland of today's Bantu-speaking tribes. Yet a DNA analysis of the remains of four children found at the site showed that its early inhabitants are not related to modern Bantu-speaking cultures. The children lived during the Stone Age, with one pair consisting of a four-year-old and a 15-year-old boy who died around 8,000 years ago. Two other children, a four-year-old girl and an eight-year-old boy, were buried around 3,000 years ago. The four children were distant cousins, despite each pair living thousands of years apart from the other. One-third of their DNA is more closely closely related to ancestors of hunter-gatherer tribes who live in the rainforests of western Central Africa, over 310 miles away. Like their predecessors, these so-called pygmy tribes, such as the Baka and Aka, are not closely related to the Bantu-speaking peoples who currently live near Shamlaka. The other two-thirds of the children's DNA links them to a ghost tribe of Africa, or in the words of population geneticist and senior study researcher David Reich, a long-lost ghost population of modern modern humans that we didn't know about before. These findings challenge the previously held idea that Bantu-speaking tribes originated in and around Shamlaka. While it's possible that multiple groups used the site, including possibly some Bantu ancestors, the children's genetic material shows that researchers have a long way to go when it comes to untangling the web of our ancient lineages. Number 6. Strange Stone Sculptures Researchers spent decades debating over the origins of a series of strange stone statues known as the Lazario Collection, or the Library of Aguaybana. Discovered by a monk named José María Nazario in Puerto Rico during the 19th century, the figurines vary in shape and size, with some resembling humans, and many are marked with symbols that have never been observed in other ancient art. Perplexed scientists theorize that the markings may constitute an unknown writing system of a pre-Columbian civilization. Meanwhile, others took the bizarre nature of the sculptures as evidence that they were possibly created by members of the Ten Lost Tribes of Israel. Many speculated that the artifacts were a hoax, based on Nazario's seemingly fantastical story about how he found the figurines at the direction of a dying elderly woman, who supposedly summoned him to her hut in the mountains and told him where to look for them. With no known similar artifacts to compare them to, proving or disproving the statue's authenticity was especially complicated. Eventually, researchers more or less gave up trying. The mission was revived in 2001 amid renewed interest among scholars, and last year, experts performed a microscopic examination of the sculptures at a laboratory. Test results revealed that the collection was definitely carved sometime during the 1600s, proving that the statues are not forgeries, nor are they associated with the ten lost tribes of Israel. But many unanswered questions remain, including who created the figurines and what their unidentified symbols mean. Any guesses? Let me know in the comments below! Number 5. Skull Helmets. A shocking study reported in 2019 that infants from 2,100 years ago were found with helmets made of children's skulls. Published in the journal Latin American Antiquity, researchers share that the ancient infant skulls were encased in skulls belonging to older children. They were found at an excavation site in Salango, Ecuador. The remains of approximately 11 people were unearthed at the site, along with numerous other artifacts dating back to roughly 2,000 years ago, a time when a society known as the Guanga lived there. This culture thrived from the year 100 AD to about 800 AD, but much of the traditions and practices of this tribe remains a mystery. Two of the remains found were infants with the skulls of older children fitted snugly over their own, just like a helmet. Researchers do not know if the children were related or why these skulls were used as helmets for the infants. It is the only known instance of infant remains being fitted with skull helmets like this as part of a burial ceremony. They noted that many early South American cultures regarded the human head as a powerful symbol, pointing toward one possible explanation for the discovery. The Guangala are famous for their pottery that has realistic portrayals of human faces. Perhaps this burial practice or tradition was somehow related to a nearby active volcano or some sort of ritual to appease the gods. Number 4. Amputation Cave Art Numerous Paleolithic rock art sites throughout Europe feature images of hands that are missing fingers, leading researchers to try figuring out why. For a long time, 
prevailing theories argued that the images represented hand signals or a counting system. But in a 2018 paper published in the Journal of Paleolithic Archaeology, a trio of researchers suggested an alternative explanation, that the hands with missing fingers were painted by people who engaged in ritualistic amputation practices. In other words, people with missing fingers created these images. But why were so many people missing fingers? It certainly wasn't frostbite, since much of the artwork was found in regions where freezing temperatures are rare. The researchers examined Stone Age hand imprints from all over the world, as well as ethnographic information on the topic, and identified 121 societies that practiced as many as 10 distinct finger segment amputation rituals. Did you know this? I didn't. These civilizations existed throughout Africa, Asia, Oceania, and the Americas, and their amputation practices are a likely explanation for their artwork. But why did ancient societies remove fingers and finger segments? The reasons probably vary widely. For example, in some societies, people removed fingers while grieving lost loved ones. In another bizarre case, sometimes women cut off their child's finger, believing it provided them with good luck, and then the mother swallowed the finger. Fingers were also amputated as a criminal punishment in many societies. Despite the correlations between amputation in ancient societies and missing fingers in their cave art, there is no concrete proof that the practice of removing these appendages explains the images. But the findings represent an important step toward definitively explaining if and exactly how these two factors are related. Number 3. Paziric Carpet Discovered in a royal Scythian burial mound at the Paziric Burial Mounds in Siberia in a remarkable state of preservation, the carpet is the world's oldest pile carpet. It's shocking to learn that the intricate design, which consists of four lotus buds, 24 cross-shaped figures, and depicts of men on horseback dates back 2,500 years to the 5th century BC. The carpet's faded colors were once vibrant shades of yellow, blue, and red. Researchers were lucky to come across this fascinating artifact as the tomb had been raided in the past, but the grave robbers left behind anything of little perceived value, including the carpet. Surprisingly, experts actually have the thieves to thank for its near-perfect preservation. As a result of their looting, water seeped into the mound, covering the carpet. The water froze, and the ice formed a protective layer over the object, enabling it to maintain its pristine state. Despite being discovered in Scythian burial mounds, experts are unsure of the carpet's origins. It may have come from Persia or Central Asia, or it may have been created by the nomadic Scythians who occupied the Pazirik site, and who may have copied the design from an authentic Authentic Persian carpet. Number 2. Stone Complex of Unknown Origins In a study published in late 2016, archaeologists reported the discovery of a massive 1,500-year-old stone complex of unknown origins along the eastern shore of the Caspian Sea in what is now Kazakhstan. Occupying a vast area totaling around 300 acres, the stone structures vary in size, with the smallest measuring 13 by 13 feet and the largest measuring 112 by 79 feet. Some of them vaguely resemble the boulders at Stonehenge. In the words of the archaeologists, the structures are made of stone slabs inserted vertically into the ground. There are carvings of weapons and creatures on some of the stones. Included among the ruins were the remains of an ancient saddle partially made from silver and featuring images of deer, wild boar, and other animals. Due to the region's struggling economy, excavations and research have been slow going, and archaeologists can only theorize regarding who built the complex and the artifacts within it. Designs on the saddle suggests that it was made during the Roman Empire's collapse also a time when a group called the Huns were migrating across Europe and Asia. And while all signs point toward the Huns having possibly built the site, further exploration is required. Number 1. Oldest Rock Art in North America A 2013 study analyzing a series of petroglyphs at the now-dried-up Winnemucca Lake in Nevada, roughly 35 miles northeast of Reno, determined that they constitute the oldest known rock art in North America. Published in the Journal of Archaeological Science, the report describes the shapes of the limestone carvings as lines, pits, swirls, diamonds, trees, flowers, and more, with each one measuring somewhere between 8 inches and 3 feet wide. The research team, led by geochemist Larry Benson, determined that the artwork is somewhere between 10,500 and 14,800 years old, making it the oldest known rock art in North America. What the experts were unable to determine was whether the petroglyphs were created over a short period of time or over several hundred years, and how they were made. Their symbolism and meaning are 
also unknown, and their creators are also a mystery, but it's believed that they may have been the first people to enter the new world. Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time! Bye!